Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk about makeup. Happy Sunday. I usually upload signature style videos on Sundays, but today is the 10th of the month, so I'm switching things up a little bit because everybody who's participating in the Partners in Cream Project Pan gives their update on the 10th of the month. So today is going to be my update for the Partners in Cream Project Pan, originally started by Steph Lyons and Dalin from the channel Outward Processing here on YouTube. I'll make sure to link them in the description below, as well as my playlist for for my project pans just in case you're interested in catching up. But if you would rather just jump on in, the basic premise of this project is that we're all trying to show our cream products the love they deserve by focusing on them because they expire faster than our powder products. So a project like this helps us make sure that we're really getting the use out of the cream products that we wanna get. If you see me looking down during this video, it's just because my notebook is right down here and there's no way I'm gonna remember all the product names and usage numbers for the month. So uh, that's gonna be my cue sheet. <laughs> we just have to live with it. Plus if I look down, I get to show off my pretty eyeshadow, which is in my other project pan, which I will link below. I have seven items to talk about today. The first of which is the Tarte Colored Clay under eye corrector, which I used 24 times this month. I have been using this for years and have always liked it, but I'm beginning to wonder if I might have outgrown this product. I can't say for certain. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I've been having like issues with my under eyes lately. Like I feel like they just look dry, tired, cakey all the time, no matter what I do, no matter how little product I use. Um, and I'm wondering if this is actually too heavy for me now because my skin is changing. I don't know for certain. I think I have like three months of use left on this product um, and I will finish using it because it's here and I don't want it to go bad. But once this is used up, I think I might actually try purchasing a different one, which would be big for me because this, <laughs> this is like one of the only ones I've ever used. Um, but maybe I need to try a lighter weight consistency. Maybe that would help. I'm curious. We'll see. But uh, I still have a while to go yet on this one. Item number two is my Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Bronzer and Highlighting Duo. I used this one 23 times this month. And the more I use this, the more I like it. And I'm finding different ways to use it. This month, for the most part, I've actually been using the highlighter as like a highlighting primer. What I'll do is apply whatever primer I'm gonna use that day. And then I will actually take the balm and I'll actually rub it in over the high points of my cheeks. And I find that it gives me a really smooth looking sheen on the cheeks. You know how like sometimes the shine from a highlighter can be a little bit textured, even like the creams because it kind of kind of emphasized pores. I feel like this just kind of gives me a very smooth look when I kind of rub it in and then I just put foundation over it. So I've really been liking it that way. Or on days where I didn't wear foundation, then I just used this for a little bit of that smooth sheen on the cheeks and it looked beautiful. The bronzer is just a titch too dark for me right now if I apply it like with my finger and tap it on. So what I've been doing is actually taking it some of it on my finger, sweeping it onto the back of my hand, then taking my beauty blender, tapping in the product like this, and then I can either wear it without any foundation or over foundation, and then it's perfect. Um, so I am still really happy with this one, and I still have not hit pan on it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how many uses it takes to see some pan here. Item number three is the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution Lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk. Uh, I used this 21 times this month. And as a side note, when I'm recording my usage, I know that some people, they record it like once a day. Uh, I do it every single time I apply it. And the reason for that is because every time I reapply lipstick throughout the day, I'm making a deliberate choice to use that specific lipstick. Because currently I'm working from home, which means I can wear any lipstick that I own at any point in the day. And so if I decide to put this on two or three times in one day, it's because I deliberately want this color on my lips two or three separate times within that day. So I record it per application, not per day, uh, just, just so you know. Um, I used it 21 times. I love it every time, but it's gonna take me forever to go through even this little bit of it I have left because I tend to just dab it on my lips and then kind of like rub it in so it looks like my lip skin is this color. It doesn't look like I'm wearing lipstick. It just kind of looks like this is the natural color of my lips. That's the way I like using it, but that means that 
it's probably going to take me at least the whole year, if not longer, to get through this little nubbin. So we'll see. I currently have one other lip product in this project, and that is this Marc Jacobs Gloss Stick in the shade Mocha Chocolato, which I used 20 times this month. Your guess is as good as mine as for how much is left in here, because you can't retract this product once it's dispensed. So there could be three more uses. There could be a hundred more. I have no idea. <laughs> I guess we'll see. But I'm really glad that I chose to pair these two in one project because I feel like the colors go really well together. In this matte formula, what I'll do is I'll apply it all over the lips. And then I'll take this one and apply it just at the center of the bottom lip to make it look a little bit poutier and juicier. And I just love that combo. So it's been really nice having them in the project together. Item number five is my Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge in the shade Powder Pink, which I used 24 times this month. I'm really enjoying the finish and the color of this one. Um, the finish is, I would say, like a natural radiant finish. So it's not like super glowy and juicy looking, but it's definitely not flat. There's definitely like a, a kind of wet glow to this, but it's very subtle. Um, so it, it's like slightly dewy. I think you can tell because like the pan is also pretty shiny, like, but it, it doesn't look like it it doesn't emphasize my pores. That's always the most important thing. I love radiant things as long as they don't emphasize my pores. And this isn't as smoothing as something as say like the salt cream blush formula, um, but it is a very nice radiant formula nonetheless. I think nothing has yet to beat the, the smoothing finish of the salt blushes for me yet. But I have to say, I really enjoy this one for both the finish and the shade. I feel like this really warms up my face nicely without like going too far. It is pigmented. And especially this time of year when I'm at my palest, um, it's, I need to make sure that I don't go in with too heavy of a hand, but luckily it's always very easy to blend out. So even if I go in too heavy, it's easier, it's easy to like kind of take a step back. In the summertime, I just kind of load this on because I feel like it goes really well with the tan, but um, I'm just very much enjoying this. The second to last item in this update is my Kosas Revealer Concealer, which I used 20 times this month. I love the finish of this. This is <laughs> so good finish-wise. Unfortunately, color-wise, it is atrocious. Um, I bought it online, so I couldn't like swatch it in store at the time, and I got the shade 4N which according to the online description would have been fine because I'm neutral, but no, <laughs> this is too dark and it is so like yellow. And because it's so dark, it almost looks like orange on me. So it's like, <laughs> it's just wrong all around color wise. I can make it work on my cheeks. Like when I'm trying to cover up my redness, I can apply this underneath foundation and finish wise, this does such a good job kind of smoothing over my pores and just like just being just radiant enough without being too radiant to emphasize texture. It's, it's like a dream, which is why I'm wondering if I'm allowed to replace this once I use it up. According to the lines on this, um, I think I could probably use it up in, in another month or two. And I'm wondering if my low buy rules will let me repurchase this. I realize I'm the one who made the rules, <laughs> so I should know. And like, I have a replacements only thing. Um, and I said that I could, I could replace things that I can't like replicate the effect of in my makeup kit with other products. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, I would love to get some input because like, I am really committed to this low buy. Like I, I want to make sure I stay within the spirit of that. And I'm just not sure because my Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer, I would say has a similar finish, but I feel like it emphasizes the pores more. I feel like this is just, just and like just that much heavier on the skin that it kind of doesn't quite get the job done that the Kosas does. The lighter strip at the bottom there, that's the Estee Lauder one. And the very like yellowy orange one at the top, that's the Kosas one. And I feel like the finishes are relatively the same, but you see more of my pores in the Estee Lauder one. Like they're just heavier. Um, and I feel like the Kosas one is just lighter. So yeah, if you have any thoughts about that, please feel free to let me know because I'm, the jury's still out for me. I still have a while, you know, I still have what, maybe a month or two to use this one up. So it's not like I have to decide it right now, but it is something I'm really considering. And the last item in today's update is my It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Light, which I used 20 times in the past month. This has been my go-to everyday foundation for years just because it's super easy and it's got SPF in it. And like, 
I, I have rosacea. And so this has enough coverage to cover up any flare-ups without looking heavy on my skin, which is why I say it's easy. I just enjoy this one. It's radiant without being too radiant. It doesn't emphasize my pores. So I'm very happy with this one. Um, and I really like the fact that it has mineral SPF 50 in it because I'm a huge fan of mineral SPFs. <laughs> um, and I mean, I wear sunscreen every day anyway, like underneath any foundation, but I just like having an extra added layer of protection that this gives me. Um, however, there's a couple of reasons I'm not crazy about it. And like one is I can't find like a perfect shade match in the range, but this is close enough to like work. It's just not ideal. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't necessarily stand up under like extreme conditions. Like it's not made for the stage and I can't blame it because I mean, the stage is a pretty, pretty crazy place. Like the conditions are pretty extreme. And so in that case, like I would normally tend to wear something more like a cream foundation, like this RCMA palette, which is currently in my 22 and 22 project pan. Um, I like this one. I like the Makeup Forever one. Um, I'm having a lot of fun getting reacquainted with this one, actually, because uh, I normally just only wore it on stage. But now that it's in my project pan, I'm like having fun playing with like the different colors in here. But that's why this isn't like the perfect everyday foundation for me. You can get a super natural finish with this, but because there's all these different colors in here, I'm constantly like mixing them and playing around with them. And like, it just takes too much time because I have too much fun with it. So like, I love this and it would work for every day, but it's just like a little bit too extra for every day. Um, but if I need to look really nice, like if it's important to me that my skin look really great for like a long period of time, um, and I'm going to be talking to people up close, like for example, if I were going to like a music industry conference and I was going to be networking with people all day, um, I, I wouldn't want to look super made up. Like I would want my skin to look just like skin, not like it had a lot of makeup on it. Then I'd wear something more like this. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. And this shade is a spot on match for me at this time of year. And because of that, I can use less. <laughs> it's great, especially because like I'll put like most of it around the center of my face because that's where my redness tends to be. And then I'll just kind of like fade it out towards the sides and it just fades right into my skin because it's the same shade as my skin. Um, and so I can just use less of it. It just looks more natural. And so like that's kind of, you know, what I would do in that situation. But I mean, I'm wearing this one today and I really like how it looks. I have a feeling this will get repurchased at some point inevitably, but uh, probably not for a while because by the looks of it, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get through this whole thing in a year. And that, my friends, is that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. Thank you.